Welcome to the Rebecca Page Basic Undies Mix and Match video series. I know that's quite a mouthful. I wanted to showcase this pattern because it's not, it doesn't just have to be a basic undie pattern. It definitely is. You can sew them up super quickly and you have regular everyday undies. But with options in the pattern and some options that I've added, you can make super cute undies, you can make sexy undies, you can make absorbent undies, the list goes on. I also didn't want to make one super long video to where you're sitting there waiting, okay, when is my part gonna come up? When is my part gonna come up? Just if you're curious to see just one particular part. So I broke it down into a series of videos where I do each option in its own video and I set it up in, in the blog in a way that you can go to a section, pick the video that you want, go to the next section, pick that video you want, go to the next section, and so on. So definitely head over to the blog and see how they're sectioned out. We are going to have um, two gusset videos. And the gusset is the inside of your panty. So we have just a regular gusset. Let me show you how to stitch that on. This is a fixed gusset. It just means it's fixed to the panty itself. And I think it's in this one. Yep. And this one is a floating gusset where it's not attached. Um, in my opinion, the only advantage to that is that you don't have a seam right here on the front. Whereas this one where it's fixed, you do have a seam, but the seam is minimal in my opinion, and you don't have this all flopping around, especially when you do the laundry and it gets like folded over. It's just closed off and done. So we're gonna have one video that combines those two because they're attached the exact same way. We're also gonna have an absorbent gusset video, and this is not one of the pattern options. This is something that I've added. And although it doesn't look very different, you can kind of see it's pretty thick in there. And we've just added some Zorb in there and I show you how to cut the Zorb and do that. I'm not gonna say that this is a period proof panty because this gusset is really short, but this would be good for if you're a tampon wearer or a Diva Cup user. This is a nice backup panty because of that layer. Uh, it's also great just as an everyday undie if you're a mom and you have those little leaks when you sneeze or you cough or you giggle, trust me, I do. Um, those would just be a way, make yourself a pair for every day of the week. And then you don't have to use disposable panty liners or your handmade pads. You can keep those for when you really need the pads and just have these for everyday wear to catch those little leaks. So you'll pick one of those videos and then you'll pick a leg video. So we have the traditional bands that are included in the pattern. We have a leg binding that I've added. Those are not included in the pattern. If you're wondering the difference between the binding and the bands, See on the bands, you can see the attachment stitching, so the serger stitching, where we've attached it and then folded it over and top stitch it. That stitching is visible, and the band is a little thicker. The binding creates kind of a thinner gusset. It still has that nice finished edge, but it's wrapped around that serger seam, so you don't see that seam. It's not visible on the inside of your undie. We have fold over elastic and that just means the elastic has a pre-fold in it and you literally fold it and clamp it onto the fabric to hide the raw edge. So it's a finished edge of elastic on each side. And we have pico elastic and that's just elastic with little peaks on the edges and we attach that and flip it over so that all you see the peak. And then we 
have multiple waistbands as well. We have the traditional band that came in, comes with the pattern. And you would attach that just like the leg bands. Or we have the yoga waistband. This is not included in the pattern. This is something that I added. This is just a taller waistband. We have the binding also on the waistband. Again, it's the same difference as in the legs where in the regular band pattern, you can see the stitching and it's a fuller band. The binding just creates a smaller band and it covers that stitching. And here, my bobbin thread was the same color as my binding, so you can't even see the bobbin stitching on that one. The fold over elastic again, just on the waistband instead of the legs. The pico elastic on the waistband. We have a stretch lace. And we have brief elastic. So all of those options will be listed out on the blog for you. So you can just check your section and go to each short video as much as I could shorten it for you. And then there are two bonus videos. We'll make a scrappy pair of underwear. If you want to do a scrappy pair, you need a second pattern. So either print out your pattern twice or print out the first one, put it together and then trace it because we're going to cut that pattern apart to make this scrappy version. We have another bonus video on the zero visibility undie. And it's an undie with minimal amount of seams, the smallest amount of seams we could get away with. Um, you'll wanna do this in an athletic knit or a swim, so it has good recovery and it stays close to your body all day. It doesn't loosen up during the day. And these are good to wear under your leggings, so you can eliminate those panty lines. And then if you want to do the absorbent gusset, you need to print out or trace a second gusset pattern piece. I want to talk about bands just real quickly. You do have a chart on page 10 of your pattern and that will have all of your elastic finishes for your sizes. Let me zoom this in just a little. But we're going to put some markings on our bands just so we only have to look at that chart one time. Um, don't start writing down these numbers. These are my numbers, but I promise you don't have to do any math. You're just transferring numbers. There are three waistbands because there are three heights in the pattern. So make sure you have the rise that matches the rise that you're going to cut out and then make sure you have your size. The first number we're going to put is just the size of the band itself. This is on the chart, but you can also measure it. You're going to add your elastic number that's on the chart. Just look at the size, the waistband, and the rise, and write down that number. You're going to put the binding number. This is not in the chart because this is not part of the pattern but we're gonna be one and a half inches tall. So everybody's one and a half inches tall. Then your second number is the length of your waistband. And then for the yoga band, again, not part of the pattern, everybody's gonna be eight inches tall. And the second number is the length of your waistband. Now don't assume when you write down one length that that will be the same length for all three rises. It is not. That's why there are three pieces and that's why there are so many numbers in that chart because not only do they have to include everyone's size, they have to include everyone's size times three for everyone's rise. So that's why we're writing these down. You write them down once for each waistband and you don't have to look at that chart again. And then for, 
for your leg band. You're gonna find your size. There's only one leg band per size. You're gonna write down your measurement from the chart or measure the pattern piece. This is a fold, so make sure that you double the length if you're just measuring it. You're gonna find the elastic in your chart and write that number down. The elastic is for pico and fold over. In the waistband, it also includes stretch lace and brief elastic. It's the same number for all of those types of elastic. And then for your binding, it's gonna be one and a half times the length. So for this pattern piece, it's actually the same. Right, so make your waistband markings, print out double pattern if you need to, double gusset if you need to. Head over to the blog and pick out your options and I'll meet you in each individual video.